Dan began season 19 resigning from Real Madrid after completing Spain in Glory Hunter. Immediately, his thoughts were to try and stop me in England and declared interest in the Chelsea job, which was currently insecure. But his mind was also on the big job in Germany that was free at Bayern Munich because that huge trance budget and of him needing to win the DFP Pokal still. So he made sure to cover all bases for now and applied for the Bayern Munich job as well. Meanwhile, the dreamer level of the Champions League came through and all 11 players were either mine or my dad's. What also shocked me was Arsenal's plans to build another new stadium as they have already outgrown the Emirates apparently and they need to increase the capacity. I decided that to make a big difference to my team I was going to need to sell a few players and that was my first goal for this summer. Dan had two job interviews come through at once and his old team Benfica as well as Bayern Munich came calling. News broke from London though that Chelsea were sticking with their current manager. So without another Premier League team popping up, Dad took the Bayern Munich role for the second time. Welcome back. And his first action was to bid for Jude Bellingham, who still at this point plays for Birmingham City. Taking Dad's old role at Real Madrid though was Carlo Ancelotti, who had just left AC Milan. Dad then went on a massive spending spree at Bayern Munich though, bringing in huge talents, including two world-class strikers. And his final target was the young Austrian shadow striker, Paul Wanner, who could transform Dad's attack. Dad, I think you had a bargain oh. picking up Paul Wanner. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 56 million is a lot of money, but, but not for a player like that. Definitely not. I mean, that was one of my weakest positions as well. I wanted a really good shadow striker attacking midfield or whichever. When this guy popped up from my scouts, I thought, bang, right on it, were we? Well, you already had a bid in yeah. for your old player who ended up, who's going to transfer to Juve Santarelli. Yeah. He was at Real Madrid, of course, with you. He was actually on the transfer list for around about 47 million. And you're going for him, he is nowhere near as good oh, no. as Paul Wanner. So that was a very good move for you in the transfer window Just after moving right to time. your new club. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't the only one. Now, there's a couple of players who are already here from uh, like a previous deal. So Angelo on that right wing, you're not playing a right wing, but is only a free transfer anyway. And then a left back, but you've already brought in what I would say is a better left back yep. in Mikalenko from Juve. Yeah, definitely. 56 yeah. million pounds. He's a good left back. Uh, you've also brought in your Real Madrid right back, Galina. He's who, made my two wing backs solid now, I think. Yeah. Really good. Who I had at Lazio. Yeah. Then a couple of strikers. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be silly. The, the amount of money that I got from my budget, I didn't really have to sell anybody if I didn't really want to. Mm -hmm. So these two guys for the prices they were I thought they're just so much better than the strikers I had there Yeah. but then I'm, I'm going to play two up front I've got four world class strikers I think then. Yeah. but these two strikers are out of this world I think I mean if you look at all the attributes highlighted for an advanced forward he has at least 15 in every single one Yeah. there is a one that's below 15 <laughs> that's mental I don't rarely see that at all so. and he's only 20 as well yeah that's a world class Whoa. player Yeah. and then the other one I think it's the same scenario. Yeah. Advanced forward, the only one that's lower is a 14 on passing. I don't want him to pass to anybody. No, but <laughs> everywhere else is absolutely mustard. Yeah. And that is Luka Puda, uh, who is Serbian, and you picked him up from West Ham for just 64 million. Unbelievable, wasn't it? 17 Premier League goals last year. Not bad at all. So, two great signings. Uh, then we've got a couple of recognisable names as well. So, you've got Jonathan Ta that you've brought in as a centre back option. Yeah. Good with both feet. 6'5", really good centre-back. Good sign, I think. Yep. And then, is this just a, like, a, oh, my heart wanted him. <laughs> well, I actually seen it. He was still at Birmingham, wasn't he? And I, yeah. He was like 40-odd million, and I thought, I've just got to get him in. Yeah. I mean, look at his... He's got he, two goals for you already. Yeah, from, and I'm playing him in a defensive midfield role. Yeah, as a ball so, winner. Yeah. So he's come in and doing the job for me already. Yeah. He's the Jude Bellingham that we do know. Yeah, well, I mean, he's nowhere near as good technically no. as what we see as but Jude he's, Bellingham. But he's still early at the moment, really. Yeah. So. Uh, but mentals and physicals are, are, are fairly close, I would yeah. say. Gets for whenever possible. That's, that's I mean, he strengthened the position like. I really needed strengthening, which was that yeah. defensive midfielder. So that was a bargain, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your tactic then, you're looking at this. Yeah. It was a 4 1 3 2 style, but. I mean, four, if you look at my two. back four, I've, I've strengthened the whole of the back four. Yeah. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Jude Belling will go straight in as well. I mean, best 11 doesn't necessarily put put in what no. I would say is your two best centre-backs, which is Tan Rudiger. But, but the rest the thing of the is, one of them gets injured. I've got another good player coming in. Yeah. And I you're mean, only focusing on the Cups this yeah, year. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, and the, the strike force I had, the two strikers I already had here were good. Yeah. And I've brought in another two. So I'm quite happy with this team. I think it's a hell of a team. All right. 
Good enough to win the DFP Pokal in one season? I'm hoping. I mean, they're good enough to win the league easily, I think. Yeah. So I've just got to hope I just have a little bit of luck this time with the Cups and just get through it because I, I can't afford to lose. Well, I can't afford not to win the Cups. Yeah, yeah. Well, you won the first round 8 0 away from home where Luca Puda scored not one hat trick, <laughs> but two. Yeah. Uh, but you did lose to Arsenal. Yeah. 6 3 at the Emirates. I'd like to say I changed my team, but I didn't. No. <laughs> uh, and then in the league games, which we mattered 4 0. 2-1, 5-0 so far. Yeah. Uh, your Champions League group is quite funny because you've got Manchester City who won Europa League last year. Yeah. Rangers and Fenerbahce. Let's have a look and see what I have brought in this season. So, to kick things off, I wanted to go big because I didn't have that much. I think I had like £18 million, which as a team that's just won the league is only going to really give you one good player. Yeah. And we're at the point now where world-class players are in the hundreds of millions. So I had to sell a few players, to be honest. Uh, and I brought in, well, I sold Solari for 56, Kovacic for 45. And I brought in Nianzu for £124 million from Real Madrid. I did target to beat the transfer record, did, which did was you? set by me, Cesc yeah. Fabregas, <laughs> when I tried to go for Matthias De Ligt. But... Then a player that I was trying to sell wanted a payoff of £15 million pound yeah. payoff, and I said no. So I went for Nianzu instead, who still is going to improve my centre-back position. I then picked up a backup option for Neymar on the left, because he is in his 30s now. So Justin Clivert comes in. Uh, he can fill that role quite well. And then Fabian, the Spanish centre-mid, for £58 million, pound, because I sold Kovacic, uh, can play naturally in both positions. He's younger, just needing him for a couple of seasons. That will do for me. So there we go. Tactics, I haven't changed it. And my best 11 is kind of the best 11 I would expect to see. Nyanzu goes in alongside Watt, which I'm happy with because Watt is the left back, the left sided centre back, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Good I just side. need to make sure I have a bit of luck myself in the cups. Let's hope they're not good enough to win the FA Cup. No. <laughs> As I say, Manchester City won the FA Cup and UEFA Cup last season. They beat me in the Community Shield, which is the domestic version. But in the UEFA Super Cup, I beat them 6-3 at Sevilla's ground. So, big win Good there. Good win, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunderland 7-2, Liverpool 4-1. So, that's a fantastic result. Yeah, they changed yeah. their manager uh, over the summer. And you didn't have a chance to join it. It was a case of they had already had somebody in yeah. place to take over, which was Kyle Jr. He left Benfica, who offered you a job interestingly enough so they've changed manager but I beat them 4-1 and 7-1 against Aston Villa and the Chelsea job just didn't come up for me did it really it no, didn't know showed a bit of interest but they, they just didn't they come kept up. their faith yeah uh, but the one move that did happen of course was Carlo Ancelotti go into the Real Madrid job and then cause a little bit of a manager merry-go-round but you had already moved at that point yeah and no Premier League clubs had come up so Carlo Ancelotti actually left AC Milan he had only been there for a couple of seasons the AC Milan manager is now Jurgen Klingsmann who left Borussia Dortmund now all I'm saying is that's probably give you a bit of advantage yeah definitely yeah. because they've been very good in yeah. the last couple of seasons and now they have Thomas Lech who came from Atalanta uh, and I don't think he's as good as manager as Jurgen Klingsmann so you might be in with a bit of a shout here of uh, having the best team in Germany and not having too many contenders. Werder Bremen's dropped off slightly in the last couple of seasons. they still got good players, but they're nowhere near as the force that they were when you were in the league and when I took over them. That's right, yeah. So, Glad, Gladbach's the team that I've got to beat. If I, oh, if yeah, I, they're your bogey team. If I beat them, I know I'll win the cup. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Uh, so that's the only thing we have to do this season each is win a domestic cup. Let's see what happens. With the FA Cup not starting to the new year, it was Dad at first who had to face Hanover 96 in the DFB Pokal, and he overcame them with ease after scoring two early goals to beat them 2-1 in the second round, which will now put him up against Cologne in the third round. Meanwhile, with the FA Cup looming soon, the Premier League was very tight with just three points between first and me in fifth place. But it was the third round tie against West Brom approaching that I was more focused on. And we breezed past them on the day, 3-1 at the Hawthorns to face Middlesbrough in the next round. Where the star man of the match was my Italian striker Adesi, who took home the match ball with a cracking hat-trick in a 6-1 win. But that's when things got trickier as my next opponent in the fifth round was Chelsea. Back to Dad though, who needed two extra time goals to defeat Cologne in the third round of the DFP Pokal to go through 
4-3 winners. And it was Mines up next who are from the second division, which was truly men against boys as Bakoko scored within six minutes and went on to get himself four goals as Bayern Munich won 8-1, which led to a semi-final clash against Hamburg with previous winners Dortmund being eliminated. But back to the FA Cup and a worrying start for my Arsenal side as Chelsea took the lead after just three minutes. It was a good half hour later before we finally broke down their defences and Adesi found an equaliser. But after the initial struggle, it wasn't any time at all before Consina is putting in his own rebound to give us the lead. And Mbappe was around on the stroke of half time to put us 3-1 up. And he also cemented our fifth round win with a second from the spot. Which next puts us up in a tie against West Ham. Which this time we cruise through with the same result in a much more dominant performance. However, the semi-final of the FA Cup puts us against Manchester United. The team who is currently above us as leaders of the Premier League. Let's get back to Dad's pursuit of the DFB Pokal though as Hamburg gave Dad a real test scoring early against his Bayern Munich team and they went in 1-1 at half time. Paul Wanner was on hand to give Dad the lead on the 83rd minute but Hamburg were real quick to respond with another equaliser. There were still two goals to be scored though as Valverde gave Munich the lead on the 87th minute and in injury time Pecorari confirmed Dad's side trip to the cup final. Pressure applied to me as Dad had also knocked out Manchester United out of the Champions League while Spurs eliminated me from the same quarter final. On the day of my semi final, though, Manchester United gifted us a penalty earlier on, which Adesi dispatched home. And just before half time, the United defence also made a crucial error for the same man to double our lead. They still managed to put on the pressure before half time and a goal from Leroy Sane. But we then passed ourselves just one game away from completing Glory Hunter with a third goal in the second half. And amazingly, in that final, we have to play Sheffield United. Dad in his cup final was facing my old team Werder Bremen and it stayed nil-nil until Yusuf Makoko scored in the 73rd minute. And that's when the floodgates then opened in the game as Werder Bremen broke through and bagged an equaliser right after. But the game in Berlin was won mainly by one man, the young Munich striker Yusuf Makoko, who scored two more goals with his hat-trick coming in stoppage time, as well as assisting a fourth and final goal for Dad to win the DFB Pokal finally. But it's my turn now to potentially finish this retro glory hunter challenge. And ready to shock the world was Sheffield United, who within just seven minutes at Wembley found themselves 1-0 up in the FA Cup final. It wasn't until a second half penalty when we managed to pull it back to 1-1, and Giorgio Odessi yet again came up this season with a clutch goal in an important match to make it 2-1. However, there was still time for late drama as Solov got an equaliser for Sheffield United, and that took the game to extra time. And in the 107th minute, the final goal of the Retro Glory Hunter series were scored as Eddie and Ketia banged in the win. Dad, Glory Hunter is finally complete. Yeah. We had a good extra time to do it against Sheffield United. I know. They, they, to they be give, fair, they, they are like eighth in the league. Yeah. They were quite good in the Premier League. They played to give league. you a fight with old Brian Robson at, at the helm. He's the manager, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was tough because I had big suspensions, big injuries as well. Bruno Fernandes was out for pretty much the whole season from February onwards. Uh, Trent missed the final. I had to claw it back to go 2 1 up. Yeah. They scored in the 89th. And Ketia actually came off the bench. Scored in the 107th and Mbappe got himself sent off. <laughs> so I played the last th nine minutes with just 10 men without my captain. But we got the job done at Wembley. And Retro Glory Hunter is now complete. Just couldn't catch a good eye. For the rest of the season though, a lot, I won the League Cup, defeating Man City in the final there. But I didn't win the Premier no. League. Manchester United won that. Looking United finally come good. Yeah. That's the team that cost me the... It was, yeah. That's the reason why you're long not there. completing. Too long at United, I did. Yeah. Uh, but I was knocked out of the quarterfinal of the Champions League by Spurs. Get in. And I don't mind that whatsoever. But speaking of that Champions League... Dad, you won it this season. Yeah. Fin I, finished, I finished on a high. Beat, yeah. I beat Man City on penalties. Finished you finished on a, on a treble. Yep. Yeah. In this by Munich side. I finally won the cup. He won the DFB Pokal, beating <laughs> Werder Bremen. Probably the best team for you to beat in the final. Yeah, definitely. After yeah. Uh, the history of this this whole series. Yeah. But there Walked we go. the league again. So come back, done the job, won the treble for them. 
I was going to be going, but obviously I don't need to now because you've won it. Well done. Um, but we looked at the manager's job at, at, in the um, Premier League and there was nothing there no. that was dodgy. So, so if it did go to a final year, you would have struggled yeah. to even find a job. Chances are probably... I mean, there, we were looking at it when we... There was only two, maybe three teams that could have made it difficult for you next season and that I had to get into. Yeah. Um, Man United, did. Tottenham and, and Chelsea really and possibly and Man City, City. but yeah. they've reached the Champions League final yeah. Tottenham were took me all the way in the league last year and Billy Davis has still got the Chelsea job right. yeah, so, so there we go yeah. Glory Hunter is now complete I hope you've really enjoyed uh, our journey and our uh, task in hand of managing to complete the retro Glory Hunter let's add those final trophies to our glory hunter cabinets. Dad's time in England costed him in this challenge, but he finally managed to win the DFP Pokal at least, and was just two trophies off from completing Glory Hunter. Thankfully, with just one season left though, we lift the FA Cup and we complete our retro glory hunter cabinet. A fantastic achievement that began in Portugal, of course, at Sporting, which now seems so long ago. But 12 different trophies later, and the challenge is now complete. And the save game file will be going on my patreon and channel membership page for you to check out so once you have subscribed so you don't miss the next challenge follow this one because the next one on screen is ready for you to dive into